चैप्टर फाइव ऑडियो बुक शुड विजर्ड हिट मॉमिंग बाय जॉन अपडाइक बिफोर यू रीड हेर इज अ स्टोरी अबाउट द वर्ल्ड व्यू ऑफ अ लिटिल चाइल्ड एंड द डिफिकल्ट मॉरल क्वेश्चन शी रेज इज ड्यूरिंग द स्टोरी सेशन विद विद हर फादर इन द इवनिंग्स एंड फॉर सैटरडे नैप्स लाइक टूडेज जैक टोल्ड हिज डॉटर जो अ स्टोरी आउट ऑफ हिज हेड दिस कस्टम बिगन दिस कस्टम बिगन वेन शी वॉज टू was itself now nearly 2 years old and his head felt empty each new story was a slight variation of a basic tale a small creature usually named roger roger fish roger squirrel roger chipmunk had some problem and went with it to the wise old owl the owl told him to go to the wizard and the wizard performed a magic spell that solved the problem demanding in payment a number of pennies greater than the number that roger creature had but in the same breath directing the animal to a place where the extra pennies could be found then roger was so happy he played many games with other creatures and went home to his mother just in time to hear the train whistle that brought back his daddy home to boss jack described their supper and the story was over working his way through his this scheme was especially fatiguing on saturday because joe never fell asleep in naps any more and knowing this made the ride seem futile the little girl not so little any more the bumps her feet made under the covers were halfway down the bed their big double bed that they let her be in for the naps and when she was sick had at last arranged herself and from the way her fat face deep in the pillow shone in the sunlight sifting through the drawn shades it did not seem fantastic that some magic would occur and she would take her nap like an infant of two her brother bobby was too and already asleep with his bottle jack asked who shall the story be about today roger jo squeezed her eyes shut and smiled to be thinking she was thinking her eyes opened her mother's blue skunk she said firmly a new animal they must talk about skunks at nursery school having a fresh hero momentarily momentarily stirred jack to creative enthusiasm all right he said up once upon a time in the deep dark woods there was a tiny little creature by the name of roger skunk and he smelled very bad yes joe said he smelled so bad that none of the other little woodland creatures would play with him joe looked at him solemnly she had not foreseen this whenever he would go out to play jack continued with zest remembering certain humiliations of his own childhood all the other tiny animals would cry oh, oh here comes the roger stinky skunk and they would run away and roger skunk would stand there all alone and the two little round tears would fall from his eyes the corners of joe's mouth drooped down and her lower lip bent forward as he traced with a forefinger along the side of her nose the course of one of roger skunk's tears won't he see the owl she asked in a high and faintly roughened voice sitting on the bed beside her jack felt the covers tug as her legs switched tensely he was pleased with this moment he was telling her something true something she must know and had no wish to hurry on but downstairs a chair scraped and he realized he must get down to help clear paint the living room would work well he walked along very sadly and came to a very big tree and in the tip top of the tree was an enormous wise old owl good mr owl roger skunk said all the other little animals run away from me because i smell so bad so you do the owl said very very bad what can i do roger skunk said and he cried very hard the wizard the wizard joe shouted and sat right up and a little golden book spilled from the bed now joe daddy is telling the story 
Do you want to tell the tell daddy the story? No, you me. Then lie down and be sleepy. Her head relapsed onto the pillow and she said, "Out of your head." Well, the owl thought and thought. At last he said, "Why don't you go see the wizard?" "Daddy, what? Are magic spells real?" This was a new face. Just this last month, a reality face. When he told her spiders eat bugs, she turned to her mother and asked, "Do they really?" And when Claire told her God was in the sky and all around them, she turned to her father and insisted with a sly yet eager smile, "Is he really?" They are real in stories, Jack answered curtly. She had made him miss a beat in the narrative. The owl said, "Go through the dark woods, under the apple trees, into the swamp, over the creek." What's a creek? A little river. Over the creek, there will be wizard's house, and that's the way Roger Skunk went. And pretty soon he came to a little white house, and he rapped on the door. Jack rapped on the window sill, and under the covers, Joe's tall figure clenched in an inf- infantile thrill. And then a tiny old man came out with a long white beard and a pointed blue hat. and said hey what's it what you want you smell awful the wizard's voice was one of jack's own favorite effects he did it by scrunching up his face and somehow whining through his eyes which felt for the interval roomy he felt being an old man suited him i know it roger skunk said and all the little animals run away from me The enormous wise owl said you could help me. Hey, well maybe. Come on in. Don't get too close. Now inside Joe there were all these magic things all jumbled together in a big dusty heap because the wizard did not have any cleaning lady. Why? Why because he was a wizard and a very old man. Will he die? No, wizards don't die. Well, he rummaged around and found an old stick called a magic wand and asked Roger Skunk what he wanted to smell like. Roger thought and thought and said, "Roses." Yes, good. Joe said smugly. Jack fixed her with a trance-like gaze and chanted in the wizard's elderly, irritable voice. Abracadabra, hocus pocus, Roger Skunk, how do you do? Roses, boses, pollenier, Roger Skunk, you never fear. Bingo. He paused as a rap expression widened out from his daughter's nostril, forcing her eyebrows up and lower lip down in a wide noiseless grin, an expression in which Jack was startled to recognize his wife's feeling pleasure at cocktail parties and all of a sudden he whispered the whole inside of the wizard's house was full of the smell of roses roses roger fish cried and the wizard said very crankly that will be seven pennies daddy what roger skunk you said roger fish Yes, sang skunks. You said Roger Fish wasn't that silly? Very silly of your stupid old daddy. Where was I? Well, you know about the pennies. Say it. Okay, Roger Skunk said. But all I have is four pennies, and he began to cry. Cho made the crying face again, but this time without a trace of sincerity. This annoyed Jack. Downstairs, some more furniture rumbled. Claire shouldn't move heavy things. She was six months old, pregnant. It would be their third. Hmm. So the wizard said, "Oh, very well. Go to the end of the lane and turn around three times and look down the magic well, and there you will find three pennies. Hurry up!" 
So Raja Skunk went to the end of the lane and turned around three times and there in the magic well were three pennies. So he took them back to the wizard and was very happy and ran out in the woods and all the other animals gathered around him because he smelled so good. And they played tag, baseball, football, basketball, lacrosse, hockey, soccer and pick up sticks. What's pick up sticks daddy? It's a game you play with sticks. Like the wizard's magic wand? Kind of. And they played games and laughed all afternoon and then it began to get dark and they all ran home to their mommies. Jo was starting to fuss with her hands and look out of the window at the crack of the day that showed under the shade. She thought the story was all over. Jack didn't like women when they took anything for granted. He liked them apprehensive, hanging on his words. Now, Joe, are you listening? Yes, because this is a very interesting. Roger Skunk's mommy said, What's the awful smell? What? And Roger Skunk said, It's me, mommy. I smell like roses. And she said, What made you smell like that? And he said, The wizard. And she said, well, of all the nerve, you come with me and we are going right back to that very awful wizard. Jo sat up, her hands dabbling in the air with genuine fright. But daddy, then he said about the other little animals run away. Her hands skittered off into the underbush. All right, he said. But mommy, all the other little animals run away. And she said, I don't care. You smell the way a little skunk should have. And I am going to take you right back to that wizard. And she took an umbrella and went back with Roger skunk and hit that wizard right over the head. No, Joe said and put her hand out to touch his lips. Yet even in her agitation, did not quite dare to stop the source of truth. Inspiration came to her. Then the wizard hit her on the head and did not change that little skunk back. No, he said. The wizard said, Okay. And Roger's skunk did not smell of roses anymore. He smelled very bad again. But the little other anim, oh, amum. Joanne, it's daddy's story. Shall daddy not tell you any more stories? Her broad face looked at him through sifted light, astounded. This is what happened then. Roger Skunk and his mommy went home and they heard woo woo woo. And it was the choo choo train bringing daddy skunk home from Boston. And they had lima beans, celery, uh, liver. Uh, mashed potatoes and pie oh my for dessert and when roger skunk was in bed mommy skunk came up and hugged him and said he smelled like her little baby skunk again and she loved him very much and that's the end of the story but daddy what then did the other animals run away no because eventually they got used to the way he was and did not mind it at all what eventually in a little while. That was a stupid mommy. It was not, he said with rare emphasis and believed from her expression that she realized he was defending his own mother to her or something as odd. Now I want you to put your big heavy head in the pillow and have a good long snap. He adjusted the shade so not even a crack of day showed and tiptoed to the door in the pretense that she was already asleep. But when he turned, she was crouching on the top of the covers and staring at him. Hey, get under the, under the covers and fall fast asleep. Bobby's asleep. She stood up and bounced gingerly on the springs. Daddy, what? Tomorrow I want you to tell me the story that the wizard took the magic wand and hit that mommy. Her plump arms chopped forcefully right over the head. No, that's not the story. 
The point is that the little skunk loved his mommy more than he loved all the other little animals. And he, she, and she knew what was right. No, tomorrow you say he hit that mommy. Do it. She kicked her legs up and sat down on the bed with a great heave and complaint of springs. As she had done hundreds of times before. Except that this time she did not laugh. Say it, daddy. Well, we will see. Now at least have a rest. Stay on the bed. You are a good girl. He closed the door and went downstairs. Claire had spread the newspapers and opened the paint can and wearing an old shirt of, old shirt of his on the top of her maternity smock was stroking the chair rail with a dipped brush. Above him, above him footsteps vibrated and he called, Joanne, shall I come up there and spank you? The footsteps hesitated. That was a long story, Claire said. The poor kid, he answered, and with utter weariness watched his wife labor. The woodwork, a cage of mouldings and rails and baseboards all around them was half old tan and half, half new ivory, and he felt caught in an ugly middle position. And though he as well felt his wife's presence in the cage with him, he did not want to speak with her, work with her, touch her, anything. Kyun badalna hai? Thank you.